Good morning, Houston, and welcome to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever. Each Saturday from 6 to 7 a.m., we'll share with you practical preventive medicine, steps that you can take starting right away to regain and maintain better health. Each week, we'll update you on books you need to read, whether written by me or by one of my many friends on what's called complementary or integrative medicine. We'll update you on what you need to know to stay healthier now, and we'll share interviews with patients and with experts. Get your pen and paper ready now so you won't miss ideas that you want to remember. We'll be talking about what you can do to get out of your pain and get on with your life. I've researched and practiced here in Metro Houston for 25 years, never believing that you're suffering from a deficiency of one or more drugs or that an operation is probably the best answer. Whatever ails you, God built your system to repair itself and to restore more normal function. And that, in a nutshell, is the whole buzz on the topic of alternative or holistic medicine that you've been hearing about these past few years. Drugs and surgery can be helpful, but true natural healing depends on three factors. First, find out what's blocking you from feeling better and remove it. Now we're talking here about toxic metals, chemicals, even many drugs that leave leftovers. Second, find what trace factors you might be missing but you need for repair and provide them. Just the way if you're missing the three small hinge pins in each door, your whole house is no longer safe or secure. Those tiny pins make the whole house work right. And third, find what switches need to be turned on and turn them on. Hormones, other natural factors that your body uses as signals for repair and healing, that's what we're talking about. And using these concepts, we'll share practical pointers to help you improve with the most common problems seen in doctors' offices. Practical preventive medicine updates to help reduce your risk factors for the most serious diseases that claim our comfort and then our lives. And practical ways to reduce your risks and improve your results with drugs and surgery that you might need. As I've said for years... When life is your choice, failure is not an option. So learn more today on how you can succeed. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 1, verse 9, that there is no new thing under the sun. So let's see what we might learn from those who've walked the path ahead of us. Galileo Galilei, famous astronomer, inventor, observer, said all truths are easy to understand once they are discovered. The point is to discover them. Now, that's so profound that, you know, it becomes obvious when everyone says, oh, we know all about gravity, we know all about uh, the rotation of the earth, we know all about uh, the seasons and how things happen with biochemistry and so on. Well, those truths were not so self-evident, and it took time to discover them. Once we know about them, it is so much easier for us to understand. So all truths are easy to understand. The point is to discover them. Suzanne from Belleville wrote in a simple question about headaches. She says, help me understand that a little bit better. So Suzanne, this is the show to give you all the answers. We're going to talk about over 45 million Americans who get chronic recurring headaches. More than the 33 million sufferers of asthma, diabetes, and coronary heart disease combined. It's estimated that industry loses about $50 billion per year due to absenteeism, lost productivity, and medical expenses caused by headache. About 28 million Americans have migraine headaches. They typically start during adolescence or the 20s. However, many children also experience migraines, and the unfortunate part is that this is often a headache that you, quote, don't outgrow. Migraine affects about 13% of the population. That just means that one in every four American households has a migraine sufferer, and 70% of all migraine sufferers are women. Tension-type headaches are the most common headaches among both children and adults. They're different from migraines. Women between the ages of 30 and 50 are more likely to experience chronic tension-type headaches, and more than 10 million children between the ages of 5 and 17, that's 20% of all young people, experience chronic headaches. Something of the bit of a tragedy in terms of this is the time in life when they ought to feel best. What causes headaches? Well, there's no single cause because there's no single headache. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of headaches. 
A number of causes have been identified which fall into two general categories. The tension-type headache, which we talked about, results from contraction of head and neck muscles. This is what you've heard of as tension, pressure, pain. It's the most common form of headache, counts for about 70% of headaches, and can occur in people of either sex at any age, but it's most common in adults and teens. Tension headache usually occurs in isolated instances, but it can become chronic for some people. And there's a a term called chronic daily headache, which is a bit of a puzzle because it seems that some folks who look like tension headaches are actually developing chronic daily headaches. Possible causes of this muscle contraction in the head and neck muscles uh, include stress, fatigue, poor posture, eye strain, tobacco and alcohol use, and in women, hormonal changes before and after the menstrual period also seem to contribute. What's interesting is in this reference that I consulted in order to uh, give you the best and the latest information, they didn't mention injury. And in our experience, when we go looking for the root of headaches, we often find injury is one of the major features in the past. And uh, often we can find a fairly significant injury Uh, just before the headache started, Uh, and sometimes it's not even such a significant. They'll say, well, I just had a little whiplash, and uh, no, I didn't see the doctor. Uh, uh, No, I wasn't uh, really confined, Uh, but uh, that seems to be the inciting or the starting incident. Now, migraine is the cause of about 20% of all headaches, and this type of headache occurs when blood vessels in the head and neck constrict that decreases the blood flow to the vessels. It's usually experienced as a throbbing pain on one side of the head with an associated feeling of sickness or nausea and sometimes extreme sensitivity to light and sound. Now, migraines are known to affect more women than men and are often chronic. That means you get one, you get more. And uh, some of the factors that have been associated with migraines are family history, uh, prolonged muscle tension and stress, alcohol use, smoking, or even just exposure, passive exposure to tobacco smoke, lack of sleep, and of course that's part of the story about stress. For women, sometimes menstrual periods or the use of oral contraceptives can be involved. And then there's some other interesting triggers, as they're called. Uh, Some people react to foods such as chocolate or nuts, fermented or pickled condiments, those are spices and foods, as well as foods containing the amino acid tyramine, which is found in aged cheeses, red wine, smoked fish, and then foods containing preservatives and artificial sweeteners. If you've been reading the labels lately, which foods don't contain preservatives and artificial sweeteners? So these kinds of uh, things are kind of widespread and general in the environment. Tension headache often uh, shows the pain as a generalized area of the head and neck as opposed to one side. It may also be situated in the back of the head and neck and feel like kind of like a tight band coming around often uh, toward the forehead. It feels just like there's a, a band that's been uh, tightening down on your head. It's sometimes accompanied by muscle tightness in the back of the neck, and usually it's a fairly short duration if it's treated early enough. In contrast, migraine headaches are often throbbing or pulsating feelings that are usually worse on one side. The pain may be dull or severe and often begins in the morning, gradually worsening over the next hour or so. The pain may be accompanied, as we said, by symptoms such as nausea, even vomiting, a spinning vertigo feeling, and even visual disturbances, sometimes wiggly lines, spots, or difficulty focusing. Sensitivity to loud noises and light is why you hear of people crawling into their bedroom, getting under the covers and saying, don't touch me, don't talk to me, don't turn anything on, don't make noise. And these commonly last from a few hours to one or two days in some cases, or even longer. And, uh, you know, people feel that they are, you know, the only sufferers in this because they often don't know someone who has as an extreme a problem with their headaches as, uh, as uh, they sometimes uh, get nailed with. And in that situation, one can start feeling quite lonely and quite frustrated, like something is never going to be discovered to help them out. And indeed... Uh, If you take a look at the medications in the last uh, dozen years, there have been a great number of advances in terms of medications available to help with migraine and tension-type headaches. The only problem is these are drugs, and that means that they bring along drug side effects and drug risks, and some of those can be quite significant. So what we're going to talk about instead is a no-daily-drugs, no-surgery type approach that can help control headaches, and this can be extremely valuable. So listen up. The time is about 10 past the hour, and you're listening to Feeling Better Naturally. 
with Dr. John Trowbridge on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. Your extended health forecast is brought to you now by Life Celebrating Health in Humble near Bush Intercontinental Airport. Our crystal ball shows clear to partly cloudy and with the winds of change blowing. If you're choosing to make changes to regain and maintain better health, sunny skies are coming your way. If you don't know what you can do, or if you're not changing anything and simply hoping for the best because you've been feeling good, no problems, then partly cloudy to stormy skies are on your horizon. At Life Celebrating Health, you can depend on us as partners in your health care and we'll design personalized programs to help keep your days sunny. Call for a telephone consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. 1-800-FIX-PAIN. Ask to receive our free e-newsletter. Just share with us your email address. Or send your questions to us through our Internet website, www.healthchoicesnow.com. Because unlike the weather, you do have choices for better health. Now, in looking at headache, what's normal is that people occasionally have a headache here and there. But, you know, that's not the one that really drives people crazy. So to illustrate our answer for Suzanne on what works for headache, we have a patient joining us today, David Peters of Georgetown, Texas, to talk about a treatment technique that he received called NCR. David, welcome to the show. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing great, and I understand you are too. Mm-hmm. That's kind of nice. Now, your story, well, first of all, let's share with the audience, if you don't mind, that you're a young man. Mm-hmm. I'm 20 years old. 20 years old, and that, uh, to me, that's real young, you know. <laughs> so, in the fourth grade, life changed for you. Yeah, um, fourth grade was an interesting year. Um, I was out playing games, you know, like every other fourth grader, um, playing a particular physical game. Um, anyway, make a long story short, ended up breaking my nose. And uh, Now, that, that's a story that we might want to hear. How'd you break your nose? Well, I was chasing a guy with a ball, and uh, when I dove to tackle him, Ouch. his <laughs> foot came up, and uh, the, the underside of his foot came up and hit me square up in the nose, um, and breaking it, like, going upwards. Ouch. Mm-hmm. Now, at that point, you obviously know you're hurt. Yeah, I was on the ground, the world was spinning, and I really don't remember much. And I remember waking up in the nurse's office. And uh, <laughs> that's not the place you want to wake up from uh, playing football. No, not really. Now, after that, uh, you found that you had more injuries than just your nose. Yeah. Um, throughout my life, I've had lots of injuries. Uh, my nose... Well, on, on the subject of my nose, my nose has broken multiple times. Uh, I have a pinched nerve in my neck, or not my neck, it's between my spine and my shoulder blade. Uh-huh. Uh, I've broken two ribs, um, so on and so forth. Let's, let's talk about how you injured your nose other times. What happened? Um, other times, just playing sports, football, soccer, um, just, you know, breaks on the top, you know. The, none of them were really, really bad except for my freshman year. I broke my nose again in football, and I could actually feel the bones kind of sliding when I pushed on them. Oh, now in football you're wearing a helmet and you've got a face guard. Yeah, um, that's, that's the funny part is uh, the, the chin straps on the helmet, there's two buckles on the ten, chin strap, and if you unbuckle the back ones, you're all right. But uh, my front ones, one of my front ones broke off, and I went to. I asked my coach if I could go talk to the trainer to get a new one. And uh, being a coach, you know how coaches are. I was, no, wait a few plays. And the play right after that, uh, they ran an ISO, and I was playing linebacker. I went up to meet the, the halfback, and uh, just the top of my the bridge of my helmet came down and smashed on my nose. Oh. Yeah. So this was just uh, kind of like bringing back memories of being kicked <laughs> in the face. Yeah, I just kind of dazed for a little bit and just. You know, looking around, and I don't know. Did did the your parents see this injury happen? No, my parents haven't seen any of the injuries. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of good because when you see your uh, your child get mutilated like that, <laughs> so uh, in school you uh, seem to have harder times focusing after that first injury in the fourth grade. Yeah, um, I was uh, ahead of my like um, in one of those talented and gifted classes. Uh, in elementary, throughout elementary, and 
fourth after my injury in fourth grade, I noticed it was a little bit harder to focus on things, but I never really let it bother me. Uh, I just figured I had to study harder, you know, pay attention. And straight A student all the way through eighth grade, and uh, you know, freshman year. And after that, the the my, my nose broke my freshman year though. I've noticed things really starting to kind of. I, my memory would just fade really fast, and uh, it would be hard to concentrate, like in class. And um, I would find myself studying a lot harder than I, sh- you know, my peers and stuff would be. So you kind of felt dumber than you used to be. Yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable feeling. But, yeah. You know, I just thought it was normal for me at the time. Yeah, you know, David, the 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 problem is, is that especially with with uh, kids and with teens, we have all sorts of explanations as to why things aren't working for them. Oh well, you know, he's a teenager, a typical teen, and or you know, uh, he's just a kid who's just uh, you know uh, messing around in school and such. But these weren't the situations with you. No, no, no. It was just I couldn't concentrate. It was hard to focus. And it had been easy before, mm-hmm. before your first injury. Mm-hmm. And then you just gutted it by studying harder until you got into high school. Mm-hmm. And then they keep putting more and more stuff on you. Mm-hmm. Now, at that point, were you noticing that your memory was uh, difficult just for school tests or with other things as well? Just other things. I mean, when people tell me their phone number, I would, you know, forget it even after I repeated it in my head you know, multiple times. Well, you know, that's general brain function then. That's mm-hmm. not just disliking school. Yeah. Especially if a young lady gives you a phone number and you can't remember that. Boy, the, yeah. what a loss. It's aggravating. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I'm going to get a little personal if I might. I uh, talked with your dad before you ever came in, mm-hmm. and uh, he said you got kind of moody. Yeah. Um, I guess I was just getting frustrated with everything. Uh, it's hard to focus, and it's hard to, you know, when you're not understanding things, it's hard to, you know, keep a level head. Yeah, it's, that's kind of easy to relate to. Uh, when when you uh, would get moody like this, of course, that starts to interfere with interpersonal relationships, mm-hmm. parents, friends, girlfriends, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, everybody, again, makes the explanation, well, he's just a teenager. Yeah, just... Just a youngin, I guess. Just a youngin, and I'm sure you probably bought that for a while, right? Um, yeah, I did. I was, you know, where everyone was saying, "Oh, you're just, you know, young. You you think you're on top of the world. You think you're invincible, you know, and stuff like that." But and over time, you had some awareness that there was a change in you that was not just being a teenager. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I would wake up with headaches in the morning every day. And uh, it would take hours to go away, and that would really put me in a bad mood. I mean, it's not a really good day to start the day. Oh, gosh, no. And, uh, you know, it's just things would pile up on that. Did you take uh, aspirin and Tylenol and stuff like that? Um, I would occasionally. I really don't like to take, uh, I don't really like to put things in my body that, you know, naturally aren't supposed to be there. Right. And so, I mean, it, when they got really bad, I would, but I, usually I just try to, you know, tough it out. When you took the medication, did it completely relieve the problem? No, it it dampered it, and it made it, you know, manageable. Halfway tolerable. Yeah. But that did not change your memory, did it? No. And, of course, uh, you know, as more days pile on with this, it's kind of harder to explain that uh, you're enjoying your teenage years. No. Yeah. I wish I could go back and relive them now. <laughs> oh, it'd be kind of nice, wouldn't it? You know, yeah. like... I guess the uh, slogan is too soon old and too late smart. <laughs> and and uh, the opportunity to relive is, is one that uh, we certainly look forward to. The neat thing about it is, though, you discovered a treatment program mm-hmm. that was completely different and almost off the wall in terms of an explanation as to how to fix your headaches and your memory. Mm-hmm. But the neat thing about it is it's taken the same area that was injured and treating it, and that's called NCR, neurocranial restructuring. So uh, when you first heard about this from your dad, what did you think? Um, I, it was interesting. I was listening to the concept, and I kind of thought about it for a little bit. And, uh, you know, it sounded like it wouldn't hurt me if I had tried it, and he was real eager to, you know, find a solution for, you know, my problems. Oh, sure, the neurologist hadn't. So uh, I can understand your dad's interest. We'll be right back with you to talk further about what happened and how you got better. It's now about 20 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME with the best medical updates ever. 
Let's pause briefly for this public service announcement. I have a letter to read to you from Lieutenant Carl McDonald. It's a picture with the letter. It's a picture of a little girl with her puppy dog. And he says in his letter, This is my precious little girl, Carly. I always told her, I will love you as long as there are stars in the sky. She would always smile, look up at me, and say, I love you more than there are stars in the universe. These words are now inscribed on her tombstone. At the tender age of five, she was killed by a drunk driver, her mother. If you think it can't happen to you, think again. Please don't drink and drive, signed Lieutenant Carl McDonald. This is a public service announcement for the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. December is the Drunk and Drugged Driving Prevention Month. And in the midst of these holidays with parties and the stresses and turmoil going on, it kind of brings out some of the worst in our, uh, how shall we say, uh, aberrated lifestyle habits. Your best designated driver might be in a taxi cab, so certainly keep that in mind. And please, friends, don't let friends drive drunk. You know, the December flower is the narcissus, and that comes from the Greek word for self-love. So don't get so wrapped up in yourself that you insist on driving when you shouldn't. Remember this letter from the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Now, David, when your father told you that he'd found this treatment program and you had been injured basically when you were about 10 years old, right? Mm-hmm. So now it's 10 years later. Did you honestly think something really could take away these daily headaches and perhaps even help your memory and your moods? Not really. I'm, I wasn't. when Before he told me, before I knew about it, I just thought it was my life and thought I'd have to deal with it. Yeah, just learn to live with it. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, you'd already learned to live with it. What you really wanted was to learn to live without it. Yeah. And, and you know, that's, that's interesting because if you take a look at the years of development between 10 and 20, uh, that's, you know, when our personality forms and our interests and our skills, our aptitudes, what we kind of want to do with our lives. And uh, you were never comfortable during those times. No, no, I wasn't really. And uh, after my eighth grade injury, my pinched nerve would always... I mean, on top of all the headaches and whatnot, would always bother me. Now, that pinched nerve was uh, at the back and at your shoulder blade, right? Uh-huh. And was that a sports injury also? Yes, that also happened in football. Football. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, you know, football is very popular in our schools these mm-hmm. days. The only problem is that despite all the safety gear, you can get injured. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. My, uh, when I got injured, actually, I was the most... Uh, Equipmented, <laughs> um, I don't know how to say, but I was the one with, with the most equipment on the field. I had my helmet, I had my neck support, I had a uh, flak jacket that went around to protect my ribs, and I had forearm guards and whatnot, but <laughs> yet I still was the one going off the field hurt. <laughs> did, did anyone ever talk to you about RoboCop playing football? <laughs> oh, yeah, I heard it all the time. <laughs> I, can, I can envision that, but you know, the, the underlying story here is that even when we take precautions, we can end up hurt. Mm-hmm. And uh, the real problem with getting hurt uh, is, you know, it, it's, it's not if you get hurt and it goes away, it gets better. Mm-hmm. But when it leaves lingering things like this pinched nerve, mm-hmm. uh, how comfortable did that uh, make you doing sports in the future? Um, it affected my football playing completely. Um, after that injury, every contact that I ever made with anybody in the sport, it would send a piercing, you know, pain straight into that area, like someone was stabbing me with an ice, an ice pick. You know. Yeah, you were stabbing yourself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting when people describe pains like that, because the nerves are just sending the best signal they can. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's really true. You, you were getting uh, stabbed, according to your body. Yeah. Uh, that, that'll lead you to uh, maybe not hit that tackle quite so hard. Yeah, it, it dampened my playing. Yeah. It also <laughs> taught me how to... It also taught me to hit smarter and not <laughs> not just run into it without any thinking. We're not going to bludgeon our way through. Yeah. Uh, you were quite a linebacker. Yeah, um, I was first string um, defensive captain throughout all my years of playing, except for senior year when they moved me to outside linebacker. Um, and halfway through the season when uh, our star linebacker got, or tore his NCL, or not NCL, ACL, Uh-huh. Uh, they put me back at inside, and with half a season of playing time, I got honorable mention in district. Wow. 
Now, you know, people are thinking you must be 230 and uh, six and a half feet tall. <laughs> no, I was, I was the smallest linebacker in the school. I was, I'm 5'10", and at the time I was 165. And uh, you're playing linebacker. <laughs> yeah. The, the big guys are heading your way. Yeah. Now, while you're talking about, you know, headaches and these pinched nerve type things, uh, did, did this decreased memory affect your uh, understanding of the playbook and stuff? Um, it, I, didn't, I didn't know why all the other guys would pick, on it, pick up on it so quickly, and I would have to sit there and think about it, you know, all through practice. Struggle. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I would have to go home, and, you know, coach would give us, you know, study sheets, and all my other friends were like, no, we don't, you know, use them. You know, it, we figure it out in practice pretty much, and I would have to go home and study them, and I'd be like, well, why can't I just figure it out? You know, it doesn't yeah. seem that hard, but at the same time, it is. It, it wasn't that hard, but for you, it became that hard. Yeah. And, and you know, the frustrating part is that you had known yourself to be a much uh, more rapid learner. Mm-hmm. and uh, saw this change, and I'm sure that was frustrating and, uh, you know, kind of leads you to say, what do I really want to do with my life? I don't want to work this hard for everything. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, when you look at a playbook, I guess the, the most important thing is if you'd been able to get that down better, mm-hmm. faster, uh, what could your sports career have been? Um, I, it's wide open. I really don't know what it could have been. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's nice to think about, but... <laughs> not not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now you came into the office actually kind of enthusiastic. I was a bit surprised. Mm -hmm. Um, I was concerned that your dad had kind of talked you into doing things, but you were actually uh, kind of hopeful at that point. Um, No, I don't think Dad talked me into doing it. He he put the uh, the option out there, you know, for me to do it. Uh huh. And you know, he made me or he let me make the decision if I wanted to do it or not, and I chose to do so. Which is exactly the way it has to be. Mm -hmm. And and you know, when you've had concussions in the past and. Your memory is a problem. Uh, it's easy to get skeptical about uh, things and, and go, you know, I don't know if doctoring is really what I need, and, mm-hmm. and kind of, again, got your way through life. Mm-hmm. So what was your first reaction when you came into the office? Um, uh, first reaction, I, excited, I guess. Uh, you know, hopefully being able to be helped would, you know, change my life a bit. Great. And, uh, uh, that I was real um, happy to see, you know, all the credentials on your wall and to see that you're a really respectable person. So I, that, <laughs> that, that uh, made me reassured. <laughs> you know, I, I laugh when you say that, David, because I sometimes get uh, people will sit there and we'll be talking about their health care, and I, I tell them, you know, I do things differently because mm-hmm. if I did the same thing you've already had done before, then I wouldn't be able to get results either. Yeah. And uh, so I'll have them uh, talk with me and say, now you are a real doctor, aren't mm-hmm. you? And, and I'm, I'm hoping that that's a compliment. <laughs> uh, in actuality, when you train in real medicine, you learn how to take care of things. And then when you train in integrative or complementary medicine, you learn how to go farther mm-hmm. with what you already know and how to extend that uh, treatment to people like you. Mm-hmm. Now, you had seen the neurologist. Mm-hmm. And what did they evaluated you for? Um, they... Re- I really don't remember what they they did. Uh, I went and got my you know my spines X-rayed and uh-huh. and all that, and they said really nothing was wrong with me. They you know they couldn't you know figure out if this was you know just my you know adolescent teenage mind or <laughs> if it was something more serious than that. Th- they mean adolescent teenage mindless. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know it, it, in actual fact. Uh, when doctors look at patients, we mostly have what we call structural tests. Mm-hmm. You know, we take a look at pictures of x-rays, and we say, look at the pieces here, and they look kind of right. Uh, we take pictures of uh, the skull. We take pictures of the brain, different scans and such. And we're looking at the pieces, the structures. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just sort of like sitting there looking at a sink and trying to determine, does that sink work okay? Mm-hmm. Well, that's you can see the pieces of the structure, but what you're interested in is the function. And until you turn those knobs and see whether water comes out and until you watch that drain and see whether it goes down, you don't know about the function. Mm -hmm. So uh, that certainly was the limitation with the neurologist. They could see the pieces looked pretty much in place. But uh, that doesn't relate in in their mind to anger or mood problems or depression or headaches, anxiety, whatever, slow learning. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was their limitation. You know, David, we'll be right back to talk with you about how you got better. And uh, right now, it's about 30 minutes past the hour here on Star 790 
KBME, the best medical updates ever. Sometimes, especially when we're focused so much on our health problems, we forget that laughter is the best medicine. And so let's try this one for a joke for today. A man goes to his doctor for a complete checkup. He hasn't been feeling well. He wants to find out if he's ill. After the checkup, the doctor comes out with the results of the examination. I'm afraid I have some bad news. You're dying and you don't have much time, the doctor says. Oh no, that's terrible. How long have I got? The man asks. Ten, says the doctor. Ten? Ten what? Ten months? Ten weeks? What? He asks desperately. Ten, nine, eight, seven. (laughs) That's kind of sick doctor humor, isn't it? You know, the key in, in getting ourselves healthy is to realize that we don't have much time to fix ourselves if we wait until the very last minute. And the idea of preventive medicine is to predict what kinds of problems you're coming up with and indeed put the healing back in place. The key holiday coming up is December 17th. That's the 100th anniversary of controlled powered flight by two bicycle boys from Dayton, Ohio, the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina on December 17th. If you want more information on the celebration and activities associated with that monumental change in the way we travel and get around, please go to www.firstflight.org and enjoy. I'd like to remind you how much this show depends on you to share your questions and ideas with me. What topics do you want to learn more about? What diseases? What treatments? What nutritional supplements? What tests? Over the past two dozen years, I've developed and improved integrative treatment programs that help many people suffering with frustrating illnesses, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, migraines and other headaches, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, hypoglycemia or diabetes, heart disease, even after surgery, and especially congestive heart failure, shortness of breath, poor circulation and leg pains, decreased memory, ulcerative colitis and other gut problems, frustrating skin conditions, disabling neck and back pains, sports injuries and arthritis, and so on. You know, it sounds almost like a laundry list, but when you get down to healing, there are basic principles, and they show up in every organ system. So tell me, what disease problems would you like to know more about? What books do you want me to review, and what authors do you want me to interview? You know, many of the leading authors and newsletter editors in preventive medicine have been personal friends of mine for years. What questions do you want to have them answer? I'll be presenting common problems that are seen in doctors' offices, uh, the very reasons that you make office visits, and giving you practical hints on how you can better take care of yourself for best results. So what problems do you want to learn more about? In my 25 years of practice, I've become acutely aware that very few people know that simple, effective, and cost-conscious solutions are available to help with their problems. And few people realize that several of the problems for which they are seeing different specialists are often related to the same cause. For example, magnesium deficiency in your cells can cause anxiety, show up as insomnia or restless sleep, even arthritis pains, constipation, higher blood pressure, worsening heart problems, even poor memory. Correcting what is causing one problem might well give you improvements for several of the problems that frustrate and concern you. And that's what this show is all about. And that's what we're all about at Life Celebrating Health in Humble. Feel free to ask for a consultation with one of our treatment assistants. No fee, no obligation. Just dial 1-800-FIX-PAIN. That's 1-800-F-I-X-P-A-I-N. You're listening to Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. And remember, we also depend on you to invite your family and friends to tune in and join us here on Star 790 KBME for the best medical updates ever, Saturday mornings from 6 to 7. Now, David, you came in and you were excited about the prospect of, of treatment, and we call it NCR. Uh, mm-hmm. That didn't make any sense to you when you first heard the initials, did it? No, no, not, <laughs> not at all. Uh, you know, it's uh, a, a term that was developed by the developer of the treatment technique, and it's neurocranial restructuring. That means that 
if we adjust the skull bones and get them back in a more normal alignment, then the nervous system will restructure itself as well. So it's not just the bone system restructuring, but the nervous system functioning better. So when we describe to you that we're going to do a simple, uh, reasonably gentle technique, and you were interested in starting, you came back in and it's a four-day treatment series. Mm -hmm. Now that takes a little chunk out of your life. Yeah, well, uh, at the time I wasn't doing anything too serious. I was able to take off work and uh, come in. So. Which was great. Yeah. Now, the prospect that you take off work to gain more time in your life every day mm -hmm. is what we're really talking about. Mm -hmm. So describe to us, if you will. Now, I'm just going to explain for the audience that the treatment involves taking a little tiny balloon. It's a little uh, finger cut. It's about the size of your little finger. And uh, tying that on to a uh, little pump like uh, you use for a blood pressure cuff. Mm -hmm. and gently inserting this, after you figure out where and what you're going to do, gently inserting this into one of the little areas in your nose, and then having you hold your breath, we pump it up. It takes two to five seconds. It feels like you've jumped into a deep swimming pool, and you come up and go, whoa, wow, that was a deep pool. And that's it, right? Mm-hmm. Just about, uh, yeah. A pretty, pretty full uh, explanation there, and we just do that four days in a row. Mm-hmm. So what was your experience the, the very first time you had it, the first day? Oh, well, the first day, it was interesting. I was really excited, you know. I was, you know, uh, hoping that it was going to come through, you know, good. And uh, the fir after the first time you did it to me, I remember it felt really good. It was like getting my back popped. Uh, <laughs> okay. It just felt good. And I remember you were like, hmm. And you are like, well, we're, we need to do it again. And so we did it again, uh -huh. and it was a little bit different of a feeling. You, um, you said that you, f you felt that it did it more properly this time, as like the first time it didn't happen as, pro as properly as you wanted it to. Right. We're, we're trying to do the adjustment your body wants to have happen. Uh -huh. And um, it, was, it was just about like jumping into a deep pool. It was just a weird feeling, and then uh, just kind of dazed for a couple of seconds. And, uh, but it felt... You know, I, I felt something move, definitely. Right. And, uh, in, a, in a good way. Oh, yes, definitely in a good way. So you left the office, felt good. Left the office, felt good. Um, noticed, you know, that I was, it's hard to explain, but uh, my thoughts were more clear, you know, if that makes sense. Sure. Just, it does to me. <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't have to think about stuff as hard and you know, just simple stuff, um, whereas... To me, when I would think about, um, you know, addition problems or something like that, they came faster than, you know, I wouldn't have to plot them out in my head. Okay, this is this and that's that. And this is after the first day? This after the first day. Wow. Okay. Second day, third day. What's going on during this treatment course? Um, just repeating the processes. Uh, you, I remember the, the first day that you did it, you were pushing on my body and to test my balance, I guess. Right. And I remember the first day I was swinging really, you know, my body was correcting real slowly, and right. I was real sloppy on that. And towards the end of the procedure, uh, like the third and fourth day, uh, my balance was much better, and I w was feeling that just walking around, you know, doing... You, you could tell yourself. Hmm? You could tell yourself. Yeah, it, it was great. And, uh, you know... But, uh, you know, that's the stability that uh, your body is after. It, it is trying to find kind of what we call a neutral position. Mm -hmm. And when it finds that and it's comfortable, it's very stable. Sometimes it gets a neutral position that it has to hold uh, where there's a lot more tension and force being used. And that's what leads to this imbalance that you were describing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, your headache. Tell us what happened. Oh, it... When I woke up the next morning, I, after yeah, after the first uh, NCR, I didn't have a headache, which was a real big, pleasant surprise. Um, I was real happy about it. My dad was like, "All right, you know, he's all." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what you came for, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, did the headache come back? No, I really didn't. Um, I've had headaches since then, but I mean, those are just probably just stress headaches. Yeah, like what regular people get. Yeah. Not people who've been kicked in the nose and <laughs> had their helmet come down on their nose and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, David, we're going to want to find out more details from you. We'll be right back 
Okay. We sometimes forget that spiritual centering is an important part of healing, getting better and staying healthier. Today's verse is from chapter 15 in Proverbs, verse 15. All the days of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful heart has a continual feast. And I chose this one because when people are oppressed by pain, when they're oppressed in their lives, when they feel their lives are heavy, those are wretched times. Those are suffering people. But the cheerful heart has a continual feast, not just the cheerful heart in terms of the way we look at life, but the cheerful heart in terms of the suffering that we're not having to suffer with. So uh, remember that about the cheerful heart has a continuing feast. David, now you said that your headaches went away. You said the treatments weren't terribly much of a challenge for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you went home expectant that uh, you might uh, still have more problems? Um, I was actually really optimistic about the treatment. Good. Um, I, was, I wasn't going to let myself get down, you know, and start, you know, oh, it's not working. You know, I was going to wait a while and, you know, see what's changed and to, before I, you know, decided whether the treatment worked or not. Right. Now, you know, that's kind of an athlete's point of view <laughs> is, uh, you know, hey, this is working. I'm going to stick with it. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, because a lot of people who suffer with chronic pain um, have, have sort of taken the idea that nothing is ever really going to get them better. And, and that's sad because that certainly leads to more depression and moodiness and, and stress and so on. Mm-hmm. But you went home optimistic, clearly walking better, mm-hmm. memory working better, mm-hmm. uh, calculations, um, all that stuff. Yes, sir. Uh, just also my reflexes were much quicker. Really? Like even like today... I'll, if I'm dropping something on accident uh-huh. and I realize it's dropped, I'll reach down and grab it before it even hits the floor. Some, you know, on certain situations. Which yeah. Before, Fast. I've never done that before, and the first time I did it, I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> F- faster than you were in football. Mm-hmm. That's outstanding. Now, again, that's another part of nerve system function, and uh, that's kind of uh, reassuring when you start seeing all the different brain capabilities getting restored. Mm-hmm. Now, when you started noticing these things, what did what impact did that have for planning your future? It made me optimistic. It made me more, you know, more excited. Uh, I've been able to think more clearly on my future. Um, you know, it's it's happy to know that I don't wake up with headaches anymore. Uh, it's good to know that, uh, you know, just everything. It just seemed like everything was better. Me. Yeah, you actually can now make plans that uh, uh, you can actually explore the capabilities and the potential that you have. Mm-hmm. Have you had friends uh, mention anything about how you're doing? Uh, they've mentioned really that I just seem like a better person. Um, I don't. I'm not as moody. I wasn't really moody around my friends. I tried not to be, but I would have a, uh, you know, I would snap at them occasionally if I would get agitated at them. But uh, really, now instead of getting agitated, I just try to understand what they're, you know, what they're doing and what they're coming across. Yeah. Sure, you're more normal. Mm-hmm. You're not, uh, you know, troubled by the pain. Uh, it's interesting about uh, grumpiness. I used to joke that after uh, I started receiving NCR treatments, that uh, uh, I was never really grumpy anyway. And people who knew me beforehand, uh, knowing about the headaches and such that I'd had, uh, smile and go, oh, no, you were never really grumpy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's interesting how much people make accommodation around us when mm-hmm. we're feeling badly. I- isn't it something about uh, telling people all the time you have a headache? I mean, after a while, who wants to hear it? Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like you're whining about it. Yeah, you're, you're just a, a constant complainer, mm-hmm. uh, not near as much fun. So uh, you... Uh, again, I'm going to get a little bit personal. Your dad says you're a whole lot nicer to be around. Yeah, I'm, I've noticed that uh, that you know they're happier with me. They they think that it's helped me you know think on a different level than I used to think. And I would be I'm, I'm more understanding. I'm more logical. Uh, they've said that um, basically I'm a more decent person now. Yeah, we would have been nicer to uh, have grown up as a teenager with. Uh, feeling this good mm-hmm. instead of feeling bad. And, and, you know, when you talk about gifted and talented, uh, 
Uh, certainly there are individuals in this life who can kind of gut their way through and, and make it happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would life be like for them if they didn't have to suffer with uh, headache and, and moodiness and, you know, just not feeling right? And David, we're going to come back to uh, get more information from you about what you see for your future. It's now about 45 past the hour here on Star 790 KBME, the best medical updates ever. For your better health, I'd like to share with you this special report regarding winter risks of artificial tanning. You know, we've got shorter days, we've got cooler days, and that means that those of us down here in the South might be more tempted to go to tanning beds. But a recent report says there's more evidence on the hazards of tanning beds. Baking under their artificial lamps as little as just once a month can boost your risk of a deadly form of skin cancer by 55%. The danger is even greater when it's done in early adulthood. There was a study involving more than 106,000 Scandinavian women. This is a big study. that shows what researchers say is the strongest evidence to date that artificial tanning can cause malignant melanoma. Past research shows tanning beds raise the risk of other types of skin cancer. Uh, Last year, Dartmouth University researchers reported that people who ever visited a tanning salon were two and a half times more likely to get squamous cell skin cancer, serious kind, and one and a half more times more likely to develop basal cell skin cancer than those who didn't. This recent report was published in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute, and it was following uh, young ladies along for about 10 years. They found no association between tanning of the skin after heavy or repeated sun exposure and the risk of melanoma. But researchers say that women who visited a tanning parlor at least once a month were 55% more likely to later develop melanoma than women who didn't visit the suntan for artificial purposes. Now, will these findings apply to Americans? Till we know, play it safe and play outside. Born on this date was actor-comedian Dick Van Dyke and First Lady Mary Todd Lincoln. She was never featured on The Copper Penny. We've just missed two wonderful entertainers born yesterday. That's Connie Francis and the wonderful Frank Sinatra, the chairman of the board. Now, David, you look at life differently now and much more comfortably, right? Yes. If you were to share with people who are listening to this show what they should do if they're faced with puzzling headaches they've seen the doctors they perhaps have drug medications to to uh, help control them what would you suggest they they know about ncr um the (laughs) it's made me feel better um and i really have no other explanation to why i feel better except the ncr um you really you know don't have anything to lose it's not it's it's not like if it doesn't work, then it changes you in a negative way. Um, right. There there don't seem to be downsides, do there? No. And uh, certainly the the opportunity, the prospect of getting your life uh, back in your own hands, mm-hmm. uh, that's and kind of exciting. It, this, if the headaches are bad and, you, and if they're tired of them, I, you know, there's, there's an answer, and that's what I found. Now, it doesn't work for everybody, right? No, I've... I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. Right, nothing does. Mm-hmm. But when you find something that works for you, when you don't require continuing daily drugs, you don't require surgery or the the risks of continual testing and taking the medication and so on, it's really nice. Mm-hmm. So we want to really thank you for sharing with us your story today. Um, you've had wonderful results from that first series of NCR. I don't know if you'll need more, but it sure doesn't sound like it right now, does it? No, but um, I would... if. You know, I get the money together, I wouldn't mind doing it again. (laughs) Okay. You know, there are more benefits to be had. Mm -hmm. David, thanks so much for joining us today. That's great. Now, wrap-up of today's program. What's the take-home message? Well, simply that headaches, they're, they're common to many of us. They're easily treated by most of us with simple over the counter drugs, you know, an occasional aspirin or Tylenol here. But what if you're taking drugs for headache more than every few weeks or requiring prescription drugs? for pain control. And what if you've trapped yourself inside this head that pounds without relief, knowing there's no way out and nowhere to go? Now, the story is more helpful and hopeful when you realize that more than you'd ever expect, 
you can be suddenly relieved of 10 or more years of chronic daily headache pains. Now, we use a variety of treatment programs for different kinds of headaches. As we said in the beginning, there are different headaches in different people. And sometimes people come in with a confusing story where they've actually got two or three different headache patterns going on, uh, one of which might require NCR, what we've been talking about today, one of which might requ require reconstructive therapy, or RT as we call it. Um, others respond to removing toxic metals, other to, others to providing better nutrition, others for treatment with the yeast syndrome. It doesn't really matter what your headache requires as long as you get safe, effective, and cost-conscious treatments, and as long as you know that they are available to relieve most people who have suffered for years. Tell your friends that hope is justified because the help is real. Now, when we talk about real help, we're not talking about having you become dependent upon a medical treatment program. We want you to become independent of it. And so for people who might be interested in how NCR might help you, let me just give you an idea. The folks for whom this is really useful are those who suffer from untreatable headaches or pressure in their head or migraines, jaw problems like TMJ or grinding their teeth, people with constant spine problems such as pains or spasms with the neck or mid-back or low back. Um, you might have even been told that these are disc or nerve problems and that surgery is your only answer. As David was talking about this ice pick in his uh, back, which uh, is feeling better. Perhaps your ability to concentrate has eroded over the years, as David described, or maybe you have persistent ringing in your ears. If you're suffering with muscle pains, tension or posture problems, or loss of balance or coordination difficulties, or even, and this is kind of funny, but if you look in the mirror, perhaps the hems of your clothing never seem to hang quite evenly. These are posture-type problems that show that you've twisted your body in order to find what I referred to earlier as the neutral position. And if you are doing this because of a previous injury to your head, to your skull, or to your neck, then uh, NCR might be absolutely wonderful in terms of helping you. Now, when people say, well, I've never really been injured, uh, what about being delivered by vaginal birth? And that's where your head's kind of squeezed to get through. Or if you've suffered a long and difficult birth, perhaps even with forceps, uh, that's uh, not the easiest thing for a skull to uh, face. Uh, no pun intended there. Uh, if you've crashed your bicycle or tricycle or your scooter or your motorcycle, if you've fallen or gotten bumped hard while skating or skateboarding, skiing or surfing or just playing other sports, if you've ever fallen off a swing or a seesaw or monkey bars or while just horsing around or even walking or jogging, if you've suffered any other serious fall or blow to your face or head, hopefully you didn't get kicked in the face with a, a foot uh, tackling somebody like David did, Maybe you've been in a fight, or while you were running, you suffered a serious injury. If you've played sports that repeatedly stress your body, such as football, baseball, basketball, soccer, tennis, cheerleading, gymnastics, weights, even aerobics and golf can do this. If you've worn braces for your teeth, or perhaps a retainer, or had major dental work done, that could make NCR very useful for you. And then, of course, the tragedy of being in an accident in a car or a truck, or sustaining a neck whiplash injury or shoulder injury. If you've ridden in bouncing boats or go-karts, bumper cars or similar fun rides, or ridden motorcycles or horses or bulls, this is Texas after all, or if you've suffered intense stress or emotional upset, NCR might be the ultimate cranial therapy. And indeed, that's what the developer, Dr. Dean Howell, calls a uh, NCR technology. You know, today's show talking about NCR uh, is an interesting one because it's so new, it's so unknown, and yet it's been sometimes a well-kept secret. Many of us remember the 20 years ago uh, movie hit Flash Dance that starred Jennifer Beals. Now, she has uh, had a 20-year career as an actress, still looks very young, and of course, you know, everybody in Hollywood gets facelifts, but she doesn't. She sees Dr. Howell periodically for NCR because it has kept the facial bones, the features, and the skin looking very good, and she calls it her facelift secret. So 
you might know that uh, this has been around a while and has been extremely useful for folks. Now, we're hoping to get more information out on NCR. And when I say that, I'm talking about uh, migraine headache treatment, not what we talked about today, but uh, uh, migraine headaches usually involve expensive and repeated exposures to drugs that have potentially serious side effects. And while recent drugs have dramatically improved the relief for people suffering with migraines, safer, less expensive, and longer-lasting treatments with equal or superior effectiveness would be desirable. And that is indeed what we're talking about with NCR. A colleague of mine and I recently completed a a trial of self-selected adults in the community, each claiming to have a long history of migraine headaches requiring frequent drugs. The uh, participants in the study completed two series of four days each of the NCR within a three-month period of time. Now, we took the uh, data that they had about headache frequency and episode severity and drug usage and so on before the treatments, and during the follow-up, which averaged about five and a half to seven and a half months after their treatments. Now, what's fascinating about this is eight of the people actually completed the two series of NCR treatments and had follow-up available about six months after. Two of the subjects, that's 25%, claimed complete resolution of all their migraine symptoms. Another four, that's 50%, showed marked reduction in migraine frequency, basically about 90% reduction, frequency, symptom severity, and drug usage. And then there was the other two, those 25% whose migraines were historically associated with hormone fluctuations. They showed virtually no change at all. So one of the major limitations for NCR is if you have strictly hormonally related migraines, the likelihood that you're going to get better with NCR is very low. However, that doesn't mean that you can't get better. We have other techniques for you there. I'd like to describe the case of uh, a 43-year-old married white woman who was uh, working as a secretary, described the onset of frequent migraine headaches starting at age 16 with nausea, light sensitivity, dizziness, sometimes crippling head pains, episodes coming once or twice a week. CAT scans, again looking at the structure, had shown no pathology and various prescription medications and over-the-counters provided only minimal relief. And at age 41, she presented to the Life Celebrating Health Office, this is in uh, 2001, during the fourth day of a migraine so severe that she had left work the day it began for the st- and uh, wasn't exactly sure if she wanted to start NCR at this time. Her discomfort had been Her discomfort had been so intense that she considered not showing up, but she was kind of talked into it by friends. And when she sat up from treatment that first day, she described that her migraine headache pains were gone. Now, she continued to make these improvements during the next four days, did get a second series a couple of months later, seeking general improvements in her well-being, and 20 months later, she remains free of migraines from that very first treatment, describes improved hearing, brighter colors, even straighter teeth and reduced neck pains. So these are the kinds of things that we are talking about as available for you. Think seriously about it. What about a real pain in the neck? Is there no way to treat it? Well, let's talk about it. Surgical experts said that there was no way, but we'll be talking about this next time. And we'll be presenting information in my upcoming book called Fly Forever, a tribute to the Kitty Hawk 100th anniversary of Powered Controlled Flight by the Wright Brothers. Today's show is dedicated to you, our listeners, and the hope that you'll treasure your peace of mind this holiday season and create a stress-free family holiday season to love and enjoy each other. Our production engineer today is Mark Fisher, production assistants Catherine Hill, Kathy Guyon, and Rhonda Bird. Thanks for joining me today to learn more practical pointers that can help you regain and maintain better health. Audio tape and CD copies of the show are available for your personal reference and to share with family and friends. Simply call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for details. And please share your ideas with us by email, info at healthchoicesnow.com, or by fax, 281-540-4329. Or by mail, simply call 1-800-FIX-PAIN for the address. Feel free to come by to see what's so special and talk with patients who are feeling better right now. We're conveniently located in Humble near the Bush Intercontinental Airport. We invite your family and friends to join me next week, Saturday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. on Star 790 
KBME for the best medical updates ever. Remember, our message is one of hope for a healthier future, and we aim to produce those results for you exclusively on Feeling Better Naturally with Dr. John Trowbridge. Have a great day and a wonderful week.